Hey everyone, thank you so much for stopping by for another video. Before we get into this one, I'm honored to announce that I'm now part of the Sweetwater Affiliate Program. So anytime I talk about a product in these videos, if Sweetwater carries it, there'll be a link in the description in which you can at least check the item out or you could pick one up if you would like. If you decide to purchase, I get just a tiny little kickback when you use the link in the description. It means a lot to me and it will help support the channel. And so this is gonna be a really huge help in terms of me being able to grow this channel and I'm so so pumped about that so with that being said I'm gonna take two seconds and tell you about one of my favorite monitors ever you've already just seen some shots of it but it's the Oratone 5 C's these are the new reproductions of one of the most famous monitors in all of history there have been more hits mixed on these monitors than pretty much any other monitor except maybe the NS10 they are a passive monitor but you can buy it in a package with an amplifier I actually did a shootout with the Oratone 5 C's against all the other competitors I'm sure you know about I picked these hands down like there was no comparison at all and this was long before this Sweetwater thing this was before any business dealings or any relationships with anyone else it was just purely I took these and set them next to the other competitors and the Oratones won and I, I don't think that I'd be able to do what I currently do without them I spend about 30% of my mix on these monitors so hit the link in the description go check them out if you want if you pick up a pair thank you so much and I, I hope that they really help and I wouldn't be saying all this if they didn't really help me. Okay, with that out of the way, we're going to talk about the proper air quotes, monitor placement, where you set your speakers and making sure that they're symmetrical in your room and placed in the right spot goes an enormously long ways to making sure you're hearing the flattest frequency response. And when you're hearing the flattest frequency response, you're hearing the best sound possible out of the gear that you have. It allows you to make the very best mix decisions because that's what this whole thing is about. You hear sound that comes out of the speakers, you react to the sound that you hear. And so you want that that sound to be as accurate as humanly possible. So when you first start looking into this studio monitor placement stuff, one of the first things you're gonna come across is what they call the 38% rule. Now I'm doing air quotes, because there are no actual rules, it's all theory. So what the 38% rule states is if you measure your room from the front wall behind your monitors to the back wall, you should be sitting 38% of the way back. So this room is 24 foot by 26 foot, and if at all possible, you should always fire your monitors the length of the room. You should fire them the, the long way of the room, not the short way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take 26 foot, which is the length of my room here, and we are going to take 26 times 0.38 and that is going to give us 9.88 feet. So just over nine and a half feet, almost 10 foot, is where I should be sitting, my head, my ears, should be away from the front wall here behind the speakers. And so you can measure the length of your room and times it by 0.38, and then that will give you the optimal ideal listening position where you should be seated when you're actually listening to music from your speakers. Now this is all a theory, and so everything that I'm gonna talk about in this video, you kinda wanna play around with a little bit and experiment a little bit it, but these are really, really great starting spots. So when I'm in the mixed position, in the listening position here, I'm actually exactly nine and a half feet from my front wall here behind the speakers. So the theory in this listening position is it gives you the flattest frequency response in your room and it helps you deal with the least amount of room modes or nodes or it doesn't matter what I call it, someone drops a comment and tells me I'm wrong for calling it the right name. It lets you deal with the the least amount of problems uh, in theory when you're in this 38% spot from the listening position. Now a side note, acoustic treatment is still extremely, extremely important and I can't have a video like this without talking about acoustic treatment. Now one of the things that this will help you do though is once you get your monitoring position ironed out, it will help inform you for where to place the acoustic treatment within your room, where to put the ceiling cloud, where to put the side panels, and you can actually Google acoustic treatment first reflection points and this will kind of give you a little bit of a diagram. I'll throw something up on the screen right now so you can at least see it. And this will at least give you a little bit of a diagram so that way you can see that if you're sitting in the 38% spot and you form the equilateral triangle, which we're gonna talk about in a second, then it will show you exactly where the reflection point is for your ceiling cloud and your side panels and behind you. And so that way it will help you know exactly where to put your acoustic treatment within your room. But you can't exactly know where to do it if you don't know where your speakers are sitting. Now for those of you that don't know, an equilateral triangle means a triangle that has the exact same dimensions 
in every direction. So if it's eight foot, it's eight foot and it's eight foot. Now there's a few theories on where you should actually measure on the monitor itself. Some people think you should measure from the tweeter. Some people think you should measure halfway between the tweeter and the woofer. Um, I usually measure halfway between the tweeter and the woofer because of phase coherence. This is getting a little nerdy. It probably doesn't really matter for this video, but I usually will measure from directly between the tweeter and the woofer, and then I measure from that point on the speaker to behind my head, okay, the back of my head, and then I will measure uh, from between the tweeter and the woofer to between the tweeter and the woofer on the other speaker. And you just kind of shimmy it around until all these dimensions are exactly the same. Now, as you can see with my monitor set up here, it's not actually possible for all of the speakers to be in that perfect position. So what I've done is I've basically set it up so that way my NS10s are in the exact right position and then my event opals are as close to that position as possible and actually my uh, Oratone 5 Cs are sitting in the proper place right on top of my NS10s and so that way my NS10s and my Oratone 5 Cs are as close to the exact perfect position as possible. And then my event opals, basically when I'm in the mixed position here, I just kind of lean out of the mixed position just a little bit like a foot. And now I'm in the exact right situation, the pos right position for my event opals. Now on to the height of the speakers. I think it's important to measure the height of the speakers from your seated position. And so you would measure from the floor to your ear, and then that is how high either the tweeter should be or the direct spot between the teeth tweeter and the woofer. Now again, this is all just the starting point. If you work in a studio where you're constantly standing up or maybe you're in a tracking studio and, and you never sit in one spot all the time and mix, then you might want to calibrate the height of your monitors for your standing height. And if you spend half the time standing and half the time sitting, you may want to set the height of your speakers 50% between those two heights. For me in here, if uh, like 100% of the time that I'm doing my actual critical listening, I'm in the seated position and so I'm very adamant about them being the exact height as my ears in the seated position because I feel like splitting the difference between sitting and standing is kind of just you're in a compromised position no matter whether you're sitting or you're standing so even though that's something popular that some people do I personally don't suggest that because I think uh, you don't want to compromise you want to at least be able to comfortably be in the sweet spot perfectly in the sweet spot and in my opinion that's seated. I really hope that helped you. If you have any more questions, don't forget to drop a comment down below and I'll try to get back to you and answer all of your questions. If you don't have any questions, drop a comment anyway for the algorithm. You guys have been slamming the comments on these videos just to help the algorithm out and help these videos get traction and it means the absolute world to me. Thank you guys so much. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up or hit the thumbs down twice, your call, and subscribe and hit the bell next to it. And there's links from my Instagram website and or tones and all the rest of my gear there's links for everything in the description so don't forget to go check that out thanks for watching guys i'll see you in the next video peace